Hello, I'm Lucia. Hi, I'm Jessica. Hi, my name is Christina. I'm from Thai Yoga from Thailand. I'm a trained lawyer. I'm going to pass you over to Alison James, who's going to talk about confidence presenting to camera. <laughs> yeah, okay, um, pop your pens and pencils down, just under your uh, seat for a moment. <laughs> we could all stand up. Time to face chitra. Yeah, so you're about a foot away. Um, if I can get you two to stand next to them. You're about a foot away from each other, you two. Foot away from each other, you two. Put away from each other. That's two feet. In you go. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Now, what I want you to do is, I just until I tell you not to, I want you to stare at the other person. Oh my goodness! You can't talk. No talking. Start staring now. It's like yeah. invading the privacy of yeah. another person. It's invading the privacy of the person. You were very good. You were smiling. It's culturally alien to us. We're staring into another's face, and that is a very personal thing to do. I deliberately made you stand a foot apart. I could have made you stand close, close if I just thought that's just too much of a challenge, really. But it is. It feels weird. The point of doing that is to get you exploring you're looking at somebody else, but actually when we're filming ourselves, especially if we're doing a headshot or a webcam or something like that, we're staring at ourselves. And that's almost worse, staring at ourselves sometimes, unless of course you feel completely comfortable with that, and some people are very comfortable with cameras. So I just wanted us to try that really, just to explore kind of what it, what it feels like when you're having that kind of very close, very directed attention. Were you also aware of what your bodies were doing? Faces. Were you were you conscious, particularly of anything you were doing? Chitra was pulling back. She she was trying to yeah, <laughs> to pull out of the connection and just close herself. Yeah, I'm holding my arm. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And your mouth. You you, you were kind of smiling, kind of. Like, oh, I really hate this. Why did she pick me? <laughs> she being her. <laughs> Yeah, anything, anything else your bodies would do? I think still, like, I think everybody's body is trying to pull out of it and just So I away. think you in particular, you were doing a bit of this. <laughs> There's quite a lot of that going on because it was almost like, oh my god, let me out of here. And if I move, if I move enough, I won't feel quite, you know, your eyes were there, but the body was absolutely saying, I want to run for the hills. <laughs> so, and so there's a little bit of a wobbly leg maybe going on, there's the nervous laughter and all the rest of it. So all of those are signs that we're not comfortable with that kind of directed attention. And that's one of the things that we, we want to get over when we've got to do a one minute presentation because it's got to be utterly focused. But we also, we also want it to be as natural and as authentic as we can make it. Um, has anybody come across this campaign at all? Dear Lisa Rogers. This was a campaign uh, by a young lady that she wanted a job as social media director for Lisa Rogers. And so to get her attention, she put together uh, a whole kind of video about herself and her capabilities, which went viral. And in the end, the campaign took on a life of its own. I won't tell you what happened when she met Lisa Rogers, but, it, but it's worth following. So it's not about a one minute presentation, but anything you want to know about confidence and the ability to put yourself out there in a really eye-catching and not embarrassing way, this girl has it in spades. So just, just it, it'll only take five or six minutes of your life, but it's a very interesting take on how people are using social media to get themselves visible and get themselves the jobs they want. So I was chatting to Maggie Norton, who is our course director, and we were talking about the fact that we live in an image-led world. 
Everything that we do is highly visual. We find each other through video, but do we do it with style? And actually, in preparing for the session, I trawled YouTube for videos on confident speaking to camera. I can't tell you how much rubbish I found. It's <laughs> extraordinary. So the first thing I want to say to you is have confidence in your own judgment. Have a look at some of these videos. Don't take them as gospel. There are countless people out there, a bit like me, who want to tell you how to do it well. But look at what they're doing and ask yourself if they're actually living up to the basic rules that a lot of them share. So do we do it with style? My message to you is also do it with comfort. I made you stand for a very short period of time and it felt very long. You are profoundly uncomfortable, most of you, standing there. When it comes to doing your one minute presentation, whatever you're feeling inside, you want to come across as comfortable. So style and comfort. If I had to pick one, I think comfort would win, but that's just a personal, that's just a personal appearance because then your natural authenticity comes through. So when you see people speaking on camera, or maybe in the classroom, or your teachers, or whoever. Can you think of anybody, famous or not famous, they're really good at the way they get their message across. I really want to listen to them. Can you think of anybody particularly who springs to mind? Probably not now I've asked you the question. <laughs> Somebody who always springs to my mind is Barack Obama. Because when you watch him speak, He's, he's in such possession of his material, he's so charismatic. He has a very engaging way of making you want to hear him. But who is it that you admire? I went to a lecture once at um, Rose Bruford uh, School of Speech and Drama and there was a lady there, I think she from, was from the Royal Opera House or some, somebody who was terribly well known. I'd never heard of her because I just didn't move in those circles. But she was just the kind of person who had passion for her subject atoned her voice and eye contact, she could have talked all day. And I couldn't tell you what she said now, actually, but it didn't matter because I just enjoyed listening to her so much. So, first of all, you've got to think about where you're presenting. So today you were presenting in the classroom. Um, what sort of things were you aware of as you were filming? Or weren't you? Maybe you weren't aware of your surroundings at all. Were you very conscious, oh, I'm sitting in a classroom, there's a table here, I'm looking across at somebody, I'm holding a flip cam or she is, he is. Yeah. Was that distracting for you? Were you conscious of feeling a bit self-conscious? It's not too many conscious. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I was more aware of... The man with the camera. So, when we are being filmed, and I've, I've been in, uh, I was in a, an ITV TV documentary a couple of years now, I've, I've gone and done quite a lot of filming now, both for work purposes and outside, and it's amazing how even when you've done it a bit, the moment that camera comes into play, you are horribly aware of its presence. So one of the things that you have to do, whether it's a little handheld flip cam, whether it's somebody with a huge piece of kit, is try and completely black out the fact that it's there at all by whatever means, whether it's just by using some kind of focus point. Or the, um, the Olympic gold medalist, um, Mark Woods, talks about drawing the black curtains. When, when his swimmers, when his team are getting into the pool, he says, don't think about the media, don't think about the cameras when you're getting ready to dive. Draw your black curtains, and that will black out um, your surroundings for you. Just concentrate on the job in hand. That is what works for him and his team. You have to find your own version of the black curtains. How can I just say that my surroundings don't matter, the whole mechanics of the process don't matter, what I have to say matters. The other thing, you know, you, you kind of largely, it was sort of torso to headshots with what you were doing, you were leaning on tables and things. Um, thinking about how best am I visible? Am I best if I'm just a headshot? Am I best if I'm if I'm sort of waist high, actually at my best, if I'm standing and you're getting all of me in that shot. So you've got to think about then, if you are going to be all of you, are you going to be having your wonky leg? Are you going to be fiddling with your jacket? Or, or if you're just a headshot, I was watching your eyes and some of you were saying, hello, my name is, and the eyes were going like this. Because again, you were kind of retreating from the camera. So it's about, if I'm going to be a headshot, that's a very intimate shot. 
I've got to have my eyes either, if it's not on the cameraman, or on, on, a, on an agreed point or at my camera or a point just above it so that I don't look completely unnatural. So, so that you've got, you've got something and you've got to sit on those hands. You've got to make sure your eyes don't swivel in your head. And when you play back your films or when you think about it, then you can really start building up, that's what I do, I didn't know I did that a lot. Or I didn't know I bit my lip. Just starting to sort of iron out some of the things that detract from the message. You've only got 60 seconds, so nothing can detract from that message. Okay, so how do you feel? We touched on this a bit. How do you feel about being filmed or photographed? Chitra asked you this question just afterwards, and, and you felt fine with it, and one of you felt challenged. I need the script. I definitely need to have the script, and that's really important. You don't necessarily read from the script, but you've planned out, you've meticulously mapped out what it is you're going to say, so that you've got the absolute essentials of your message there. And you, you, you rerun it, you try it. Nervous ticks, hair flicking, weaving, waving hands, we've got wonky leg, we've spotted that already. Does anybody colour up? No? That's all good, but you don't know if you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just remember what I was going to say. Um, Gideon Shalwick was talking about the fact that we are very uncomfortable with sometimes hearing our voices or seeing our images because we don't, we don't relate to it naturally. Um, and he says the way to get over that is, is just to literally expose yourself to yourself. But it is about desensitising yourself, you know, getting used to your voice, getting used to your face, getting used to your mannerisms. So really exposing yourself, like, even if it feels a bit weird and uncomfortable to start off with. A couple of you did a few ums and ahs. So it's thinking about, as you listen to yourself speak, especially if it's a little bit longer than a minute, are there pauses, are there ums? When you um, does your gaze go up somewhere because you're going, oh my God, what was I going to say? Or whatever it is. Thinking about those kinds of things. The other thing about singing training is that you are, especially in musical theatre, you start that song with a bang, with that first note, unless it's some kind of, you know, wincy ballad where you've got to start a bit warbly and then gradually build up some fabulous crescendo. But it is about starting that song on a powerful note. And in your 60 seconds, you've got to start your talk, your pitch, on a really powerful note. I have got an example of a slightly scary powerful note that I will show you at the end. It's not mine. Um, so let's get you standing up again, just thinking about bodies. <coughs> Don't worry, I'm going to make you stare at each other. <laughs> what I do want you to do is just shake your, shake your feet, shake your hands, roll your shoulders a bit, lift up your shoulders, tilt your head from side to side, don't worry, that's as, that's as much aerobics as we're going to do. Um, but just, just stand and think about, think about your body. How are you holding your body right now, would you say? Are you hunched anywhere? Are you very tense anywhere? Are your bottoms out? Are your tummies in? <laughs> <laughs> if your bottom is out and you can bring it in a bit, I would. <laughs> and you do that by bringing your tummy button in. So if you pull your tummy button back to the back of your spine, but what you don't want to do is then clench your buttocks. You want your hips to be loose. What about your arms? Do your arms feel tense? Are your knees locked? Is your weight distributed evenly? Imagine somebody's got a string at this point of your head and they're just pulling you straighter. Just imagine somebody's just pulling that string straighter. Can you feel yourself? You've all grown maybe half an inch, actually. Great, just, just deep, take a deep breath in through the mouth. And then just get rid of it. Now I want you to breathe in through your nose for three. And out through the mouth. Good. Now pretend you're a really hot dog. <laughs> Come on, I can do it. Now what I want you to do is I want you to breathe through your nose for seven. Hold it for one. And I want you to gradually release it for twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
I would make you do that again several times, but I think that's a bit mean. But breathing is really, really important. If you get nervous, if you get tense, if you get tight across your chest, your voice and your nerves are going to be exacerbated. So your breathing is going to be essential for loosening that up. The other thing is about owning the space. Is your weight evenly distributed? As you're standing there tall and your hands are loose, is your weight evenly distributed? You're not like this or like that or anything like that. Because that also helps you own the floor and be confident. So how you stand, even in a very simple way, is really important as well. Okay, have a seat. Okay, so getting towards the end now, wrapping up then the tips of how to present confidently. And I'm calling it the art of being conversational. And that doesn't mean that it's all, hi, lol, how are you, chat, you know, very friendly and familiar, but it is about being as natural as you can be. Um, it was interesting looking at um, Laura's blog from last year when students did it, and some of them said, actually, I think I was more natural, more comfortable on my first take because I was being me. May have been a bit ragged around the edges, but when I next did my, um, my, my, my takes, I was remembering what to say. My name is, and it suddenly it had got, it was very precise and it was clear, but it was a little bit more stilted. So, you know, you've got to think about what's, what's the most important quality? How can you be um, direct, but conversa conversational at the same time? So practice introducing yourself, film it. The other thing is focus. Pei Chin is probably going to tell you about the rule of three. The rule of three in any kind of presentation is often about boiling things down to three key messages. You haven't got time for anything else. It may not be three, it may be one message. You need me because I've got stuff that nobody else has. Preparation, you talked about having a script, but really important, really important that you prepare you know exactly what you want to say. You hone things, you tweak things. If you're not satisfied, tweak it some more. We talked about a strong opening. How are you going to catch somebody's attention? You haven't got time to pussyfoot about. Can't stress this enough. We talked about it at the beginning about doing things with style, but doing things with comfort. If you're comfortable, you're going to be you. What an organisation wants is you. They don't want a version of you. They don't want a version of what you think they want. They want you. The other thing is you've only got 60 seconds, so it's really tempting to treat it like a supermarket market trolley dash, where you kind of go, oh, I'm obsessed and I'm asking your and I really want to work for your company, blah, 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 blah. the end, and then you kind of subside, hot and sweaty 60 seconds later. You've got to imagine you've got all the time in the world, because they need to be able to hear your message. Keep it short, keep it clear, don't rush it. Some of, you, some of you were saying, oh, I was really conscious, 60 seconds, 60 seconds. So play it back and, and hear if you really are gargling. We talked about eye contact right at the beginning. What looks like a really natural, focused eye contact to you? Do a few runs. You know, do you, do you look like a stalker? Do you look like someone they'd like to get to stalk? But the most important thing is, we're talking about you, but this is actually not about you. Your 60 seconds is all about them. Who are they? Know your audience. Why do they want to give up 60 seconds of their lives to hear about you? What is in it for them? So you are going to make it clear to them why they need you in 60 seconds. And that's exactly what dear Lisa Rogers does. Now she has a bit more than 60 seconds, it's true. But, but the baseline of her message is absolutely that. Why do you need me? So, um, just to wind up then, I've just put a few links here. And then as I said to you, I did have a look at various videos on YouTube. And of course, the thing about YouTube, like Wikipedia, there is some fantastic stuff out there, but you do have to be critical, you have to sift. And you, you find things that think, they, they're titled in a way you think, this is just what I need, until you play it. And then you find that actually, maybe they're not practicing what, what they preach. So not necessarily what you'd be looking for in the field that you're working in, but there, is, there are certain tips that you can, you can take away. So that's, that's the end of that. I don't know if anybody's got any questions or any observations to make. What should you be doing with your hands? Because I know I mean, you start playing with your I, hands. I did, yeah, yeah. So what is, 
a preferred thing to do. If you were doing it longer for five minutes, and I'm somebody who uses my hands a lot, then, then I think that's absolutely, absolutely fine. You might have them together or they may not even be visible, it just depends. Just what you don't want them to be doing is doing what I was doing, which is getting your hair out of your eyes or, or fiddling with, with something. Um, so I think, I think in 60 seconds, you don't want anything to detract really from your message. So stillness is good. No gimmicks to, don't be you know, tempted to pick up a piece of the jigsaw. I'm your missing piece of the jigsaw. <laughs> <laughs> Unless we should know they're going to work. I'm holding a pen in your hand, so yeah. if you're playing, at least you're playing with a pen and it's a little, so it doesn't take that much attention. Yeah. When I was, was doing the ITV documentary, I tended to hold a mug because it made me feel like I was doing something and it helped me not think about the fact that there was a, there was a camera. So, um, you know, a mug or, or, or anything just to occupy you. Um, if we had longer and if we were doing longer sessions, we could talk about, you know, being filmed and different kinds of shots if you're actually working with something, which is an entirely different kind of experience. Thank you very much.